IRG Exacta Varex VX, a joy to behold, a nightmare to use. Hi guys, it's Howard again, and today I'm going to show you a marvel of German engineering. I'll give you a short summary of the history of this camera first, because it's pretty interesting. It followed on through a series of cameras from the German-built 1936 Kinney Exacta, which was the very first 35mm single-lens reflex camera ever made. The Kinney Exacta was made from 1936 through to 1940, at which point production ceased due to World War II. This was exacerbated by the destruction of the factory and the terrible firebombing of Dresden in February 1945. They were able to get going again and the Kinney Exacta was produced again after the war in what was now Soviet-controlled East Germany from late 1945 through to 1949. The Exacta II was then produced from 49 to 50, followed by the Varex from 50 to 51, and then the Varex VX, my model, from 1951 through to 1956. As far as I can tell, my VX appears to have been made in 1954. These were largely used for scientific purposes, and there was an amazing array of accessories for these cameras. They were a complete system. Accessories included waist level finders, extension rings, rail and bellows sets, microscope attachments, ring flashes, and a host of other gadgets, as well as a range of lenses and adapters. <laughs> I was exaggerating a bit when I said it's not a nightmare to use, but I do find it quite awkward to hold and you really do have to take your time. There's no quick shots with this baby, I assure you. But none of this really matters. It's a mechanical marvel and a work of art, and is worth owning for those aspects alone. I absolutely love it. Let's have a look at this jewel of a camera, and uh, let's start at the front. Okay. Proudly above the lens is the nameplate, Exacta Varex VX. IRG Dresden in very oldie worldy lettering. Now I'll take the lens off to show you the rest of the front of the camera. So there's a little lever down here. We've got to hold down and then we just rotate it. It's a nice bayonet mount, so we'll put the lens to one side for the moment. Okay, so on the front here we've got the lever to release the lens. We've got the shutter button here. That's, there's no shutter button on top, the shutter button's on the front. I'll just cock it. Yeah, so, okay, there's the shutter button. It's on B at the moment. Apart from the shutter button, in case you worry about knocking the shutter button and accidentally taking a shot, there's this lovely little cover that swings down and prevents you from accidentally pressing the button. So that's... It's a beautifully engineered little piece as well. It moves just so beautifully. And on the right is this gorgeous bit of Art Deco mechanical engineering that's the actual flash uh, post for the, uh, the electronic flash. Uh, it mounts to two points. You can see there's two other points on the other side for another flash mount. This is uh, X for uh, electronic flash. The other side is M. Obviously bulbs might have been on the way out then, or perhaps you had a choice of which type of mount you wanted. So any of those two are unused. Uh, up the top here, of course, the, uh, the prism is removable. It's, you know, obviously it's got a range of different finders. Uh, so to move that, you just pull this down and it, it pops out. Okay, let's have a look on top. Now this is a... <laughs> an interesting little mechanical collection of items. It's very similar, you know, despite the fact that this is 20 years later than the 1936 model, it hasn't really changed all that much. It's still got largely that look. So we've got the cocking lever, which is this rather thin, strangely offset unit. If you listen, you'll hear the um, mirror go up there it was, and you actually have to take that all the way around to there to cock it. We've got the, the faster shutter speed ring. So that goes from, apart from B for bulb, T for time, a 25th, 50th, 100th, all the way around to a 1,000th. To change that, 
the camera has to be cocked, which it currently is, you lift it and move it to whatever speed you want, a thousandth of a second, for instance. Okay, cock it again. Now you can only change the shutter speeds once the camera is actually cocked. So you must always cock it before you change the shutter speeds and you must always rotate in the direction of the arrow. So I'll leave it there for the moment. Um, we've got the film frame counter down in this little cutout here. And to change that, there's this beautiful little wheel, once again with a little arrow on it, and you just rotate that and that moves your frame numbers around. Now, over on the right hand side, there's a, an amazing device. Uh, at the bottom, there's simply an ASA reminder scale and you can, for color film, you've got a little red C and an arrowhead pointing to the ASA or if you're using black and white, around here you've got a black and white with an arrowhead and just rotate them around to whatever speed you're using. Now the knob itself, it's uh, quite, a, <laughs> quite a bit of work. So to, to use it, you've got to yeah, make sure it's cocked. We've got to put it onto B. We've got to go in the direction of the arrow. Okay, so it's on B. Now, we can wind it up fully, and it takes a bit of doing. It's very tight, but so at the moment, it's set for a two-second exposure. Let's lift the ring and make that a five-second exposure. I'll open the back so we can see what's going on. To open the back, you pull the knob out and rotate it clockwise. Okay, so we've we've cocked the shutter. So that's all right. We put it on five seconds. We take the shot. Probably a little longer than five seconds. I think it's the mechanism's lost a bit of uh, oomph in its seventy years, but it's. Uh, Still, that's so, uh, and you can actually go all the way up to 12 seconds. So you can take a 12 second time exposure. If you get into the second lot of numbers here, so if you rotate, rotate all the way around past the 12 here, the 12 then becomes a time delay and it uses these shutter speeds here. So it's a fairly complex bit of gear. All right, while well, we've got the back open, I won't, I won't pull the pin out and take the back off you know, from this little hinge. We'll leave that. So to rewind a film, you press this button down here. As you can see at the moment, it's locked with the, uh, with the mechanism. Push it down here, but it, you know, it rotates freely, and then you can rewind the film. Over on this side, because they were used for scientific use, you might want to take two or three photos and then go and develop it and have a look. So they supply a film cutter. And that's this little device here. So you unscrew the little knob on the bottom. We've got the blade up the top and you simply pull it down and cut the film off. And then you can open it in the dark room, take out the exposed part and... Uh, Re, uh, you know, develop that, and uh, you've got some left sticking out of the cassette, which you can then pull out, reshape, and uh, put in again. So uh, you know they thought of everything <laughs> to shut the camera, hold it together, rotate the thing, and push it in. Okay. There's nothing on the sides except lovely gleaming chrome work underneath. Well, that's the little film cutter we just looked at. We've got the rewind knob over here, which is, for some reason, is sort of 
double jointed. Okay, so that's the camera body. Let's have a look at the lens. Now the lens is a beautiful lens. As I said, it's a Carl Zeiss Jena Biotar. It's a double gorse design, similar to the planar F2 58mm. Uh, beautiful focusing action. Focuses down to uh, half a metre. So it can get really close. Got a lovely depth of field scale on it. And of course the, uh, the shutter button uh, extension. So put it back on. It's a, it's a preset lens. I don't know if I said that, but anyhow, if it's currently on f8. If you wanted to be, say, on f4, for instance, you turn to f4, let the ring out again. As you can see, the aperture is now f4. We cock the aperture, and it's fully open for focusing. So you heard the two-part, the two-stage operation then. First of all, the lens, then the, then the shot. Well, I think that's about it, other than to say it's an absolutely beautiful piece of equipment. Uh, it's just early German engineering at its best. It's a delight to hold and play with. It's not such a delight to take shots with, but if you're prepared to take the time and effort, this can take absolutely magnificent shots. The, the quality of this camera is absolutely superb. They're not cheap. I've seen them advertised anywhere from 200, well, $250 up to eight, eight or 900 dollars. So uh, you know, you're not going to pick one up cheaply unless you're very lucky. But it's a beautiful camera and uh, so that's it, the Exacta Varax VX IRG Dresden. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and got learnt something from it. If you have, please like and subscribe. It'll cost you nothing and it helps the channel such as it is. Uh, so thanks again and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.